Hey, I'm Cero and I have ranked up from silver, yes silver, to immortal in just one act, with Radiant following shortly after. You're probably left here thinking how it's possible that some players like myself can rank up all the way from silver to immortal so quickly when you've been struggling to break through the pits of elo hell for which seems like an eternity. No, all these players who rank up insanely fast don't just get lucky. And there's actually a formula to replicate these results. The question isn't if you can rank up to Immortal, but how you can rank up to Immortal. So that's exactly what I'll be breaking down. How all these players, including myself, were able to rank up insanely fast so that you can understand it and do it for yourself. But before I reveal the secrets, I want to quickly mention that I have partnered with Buff to give away more Valorant points to you guys. For those who aren't familiar, Buff is the easiest and my personal favorite way to get Valorant skins for free. The way it works is you simply have buff open in the background of your game while you're playing. By playing and completing easy challenges, you'll earn buff points, which can then be redeemed for cool prizes, and the one we care most about, Valorant points. For those of you wondering, no, buff isn't a crypto miner, and doesn't slow down your game at all. Instead, they make all of their money through ads and paid subscriptions. Thanks to buff, in this video I'll be giving away $100 worth of Valorant points to you guys. To enter the giveaway, simply comment your buff and discord username down below. Just like I did in my previous giveaways, I'll be announcing the winners in my Discord server, link below. So if free skin sounds nice to you, consider downloading both using the link in the description or pin in the comments. So now that your skin addiction is satisfied, let's jump straight into it. This is the in-depth, no BS guide on how to rank up to Immortal. In order to explain this, we must first understand the fundamental principle of ranking up. And this part is really important, so if you get anything out of this video, this should be it. This might trigger some people, but the reality is that you're not the rank you want to be because you are not as good as you think you are. You need to drop your ego because the only way to rank up is through improvement. More specifically, you want to proportionally improve at the three main aspects of Valorant, your mechanics, your game sense, and your mentality. And the keyword here is proportionally. To explain this, let's use a ladder. So in a ladder, you have a pole on the left side, let's label it mechanics, this includes your aim and movement. Then you have the pole on the right side, labeled game sense, which includes decision making, positioning, ability usage, rotations, etc. And you got the bars going up the middle, let's call this your mentality, which refers to your ego, your long term mindset, your attitude towards your teammates, towards bad games, and etc. The key idea is that you need to develop all three skills to move to the next letter of the ladder, or in this case to the next rank. You might have mechanics built up to Ascendant and have Metality built up to Diamond, but if your game sense is stuck at Silver, it will be extremely hard for you to rank up past Silver or Gold. But if all of a sudden you manage to catch up on your game sense and improve it to a Diamond level, you will automatically go up 3 rungs in the ladder, or in this case rank divisions, because the constraint has been removed. You need to understand that your rank is determined not based off your greatest strength, but by your biggest weakness. So if your weakest link and limiting constraint is your game sense or mentality, then aim training more won't help you rank up. Instead, you need to focus all of your attention on removing the constraints holding you back. It's crucial to understand that you can be extremely good at one aspect, but for you to overall improve and rank up, you need to put all of your attention on developing your weakest link. And this is exactly what happens to these players like myself who rank up from silver to immortal in a very short period of time. They simply already have the majority of the ladder built up to a very high level, so all they have to do is focus on just one skill, and once that skill is no longer the constraint and no longer holding them back, they're able to skyrocket through the ranks. In my case, I was able to improve very quickly through implementing the same pro strategies I used to try to go pro in other games. You might be asking, what are these strategies you used? And how do I improve my mechanics, my game sense, and my mentality to rank up as quickly as possible? Depending on whether mechanics, game sense, or mentality is your constraint, I left timestamps on the video so that you can skip to which section best suits you. Otherwise, let's begin with improving your mechanics, since it's the easiest to apply and move into game sense followed by mentality later in the video. Mechanics essentially consists of two factors, your aim and your movement. Let's start with your aim. So the first thing you should do when trying to improve your aim is look at your sensitivity. I see so many lower ranked players with an absurdly high sensitivity and it just baffles me. If your mouse pad is too small, then buy a bigger one. And if you can't, then still lower your sensitivity. This isn't Fortnite where you need to build 90s. And honestly, if you have good positioning and crosshair placement, then you'll barely even need to move your mouse. That said, there are many ways to calculate your sensitivity, but my recommendation is just finding a comfortable sensitivity as close as possible to the ranges shown on the screen. 800 dpi 0.25 to 800 dpi 0.4. Once you find a comfortable sensitivity, try to not change it and remember to stick with it so you can get progressively better aim with that sense. So now that you have a solid sensitivity, we can work on refining your aim. When it comes to building your aim, the first thing I'll look at is your warm-up routine. 
Contrary to what some people say, having a thought out personal aim routine is an absolute must if you want to take your aim to the next level. There are three main options you have when it comes to improving your aim. The in-game range, deathmatches, and third-party aim trainers. It's up to you which one you focus on, but I think the Prems method in the range, followed by a few deathmatches, is best. This way, you practice your mechanics like flicking and micro-adjustments in the range, and then put everything together in a deathmatch as you add in movement and crosshair placement to simulate realistic gunfights. Many people ask, how long should I warm up? And I personally think that 30 minutes is ideal. However, it's important that you adjust every day accordingly. So if you're feeling confident in your aim, then do less. If you feel like you're not playing well, then warm up for longer. Another important tip is that when you are deathmatching, you should prioritize your weaknesses. What I mean is, instead of doing what everyone else does, which is just mindlessly playing deathmatches and shooting people, think about what you need to improve upon. If you need to improve on your crosshair placement, then consciously focus on your crosshair and pre-aiming angles. If your weakness is your sheriff, then practice your sheriff so you can actually win your save rounds. If your weakness is your bad habit of only crouch spraying, then unbind crouch and mindfully focus on taking your time to burst and strafe instead of full spraying. This is how you break those bad habits and remove the constraints holding back your mechanics. Improving your movement happens more naturally through playing and trying to make skill jumps across all the maps. That said, here's a quick rundown of the main movement tips you should focus on in your games. You should peak angles with A and D instead of W to make yourself as hard to hit as possible. You don't need to counter strafe to stop moving. Letting go of the key is realistically the same speed. Try binding jump to scroll reel to have more consistent hops like Prod and Sinatra. Practice jump peeking around corners as it's very effective for getting info and baiting op shots. You can also silent hop up ramps if you hold shift. It's also very useful to know that you can silent jump by crouching and letting go of crouch mid air. This way you can jump spot angles without the enemies hearing you stomp like a giant elephant. And lastly, practice and understand how the ropes work on Icebox because you don't want to get stuck like a dumbass. I could go more in depth but this is honestly everything you need to know about aim and movement to climb to immortal. Just keep practicing, keep tapping those heads, and I promise you'll start seeing crazy improvements in no time. So game sense is an extremely broad idea and includes many concepts like rotations, ability usage, reading the enemy team, etc. But in this video, I'll talk about the three most important concepts required to climb to immortal. Your decision making, your positioning, and team play, and specifically how to improve upon each one. Let's start with your overall decision making. This is where you decide whether you should peek or hold, if you should rotate or wait, if you should save your ult for retake or use it now. You might not notice it, but you actually make hundreds of decisions every round. And those decisions are often likely pretty bad as they result in your death or a round loss. You may be asking, so how exactly do I improve my decision making? One of the best things you can do, which most of you always say you should, but never actually do, is learning from your mistakes by recording one of your games and watching it back. I can't stress how much this improves your game sense. When you're watching, pay close attention to why you're dying and the mistakes you're making. Ask yourself, what should I do next time to not make the same mistake again? Should I play less aggressive on eco rounds? Should I play retake when they five man push? Should I play more deathmatches to improve my crosshair placement? Once you start picking up on your mistakes, you will stop making them. Your mind will begin to understand what's a good and bad play, which strategies work and which don't. If you can remember to save some clips for a montage, I'm sure you can save some of your games to look over. Trust me, since everyone is too lazy to do this, if you actually do it, you'll improve significantly faster than everyone else in your rank. That said, the only thing that might be better than learning from your own games is finding someone who is already way better than you and learning from them. The principle is the same. When watching a pro player, look at what they're doing which you are not. Take some notes on some of their tricks and playstyles and then replicate that in your own games. What do they buy on pistol? Which angles do they hold? When do they use their ultimate? The more notes you can take, the more you will learn and the better you will become. And that's a fact. Hint hint, it's a good idea to rewatch or take some notes on this video too. Moving on to your positioning. Even though positioning is technically a part of your decision making, I decided to make a separate section for it because of how important it really is. That said, here are the 7 most important rules when it comes to having good positioning. Number 1. You should always 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 have a plan. Where will you fall back after getting a kill? What will you do if you get full flashed or tagged with a silver drone? Look at the agents on the enemy team and think about all the different ways they can push you. It's crucial to think about all this not on the spot, but before you play in that position. Number 2. Be ready to retake. If the enemy is 5 men pushing with silver drones and killed your ultimates, unless you know how to guarantee kill at least 2-3 people, it's best to retake with your team. If you die solo on site, you provide absolutely no value and make it significantly harder for your team to win the round. However, on a retake, you can communicate your utility and peek as a team, increasing your chances of winning the round significantly. Number 3. Play off of your teammates. 
In most situations, such as in a post plant, remember to set up crossfires or peek off your teammates' contacts because you either easily get the kill or worst case scenario, your team gets the trade. Number four, angled perception advantage. The closer you are to the wall, the earlier the enemy will see you and vice versa. This is simply explained by how the Valorant view works. If you're touching a wall, you won't be able to see the enemy, but they'll be able to see your shoulder, clearly putting you at a disadvantage. Knowing this, try to play a bit farther back whenever you're next to an angle to prevent giving the opponent the advantage. Number five, peaking and unpeaking. You should never hold angles static. Every time you're playing in a standard angle, the enemy will swing with their crosshair pre-aimed on your head, giving them an easy kill. To make matters worse, they will also have peekers advantage, allowing them to react to you first. To turn the table in your favor, you need to implement peaking and unpeaking into your gameplay. By peeking and unpeaking, you can catch the enemies on the moment they've already cleared you and started clearing the next angle. On top of that, by peeking and unpeaking, you actually have peekers advantage on your side, giving you the upper hand in the duel. Number six, off angles. The main point you want to get when it comes to off angles is that the less enemy players are on the map, the more off angles you should be playing. This is because the enemy has less map control, meaning you can be in all sorts of weird angles, and because there are less opportunities for the enemies to trade you. Keep in mind that you should mostly be playing a lot of off angles if you're a jet, rain, or chamber, as you can easily escape. Number seven, can I delay the defuse? This is the most important question you can ask yourself when deciding on your positioning after planting the bomb. If the answer is yes, then you should be playing farther back and using your utility to get the enemies off of the spike. Examples include Sovos Ultimate, Viper lineups, Brim's ult, and so on. If your agent has an ability that can delay the defuse, make sure that it doesn't go to waste. Because remember that every single second the bomb ticks by, the higher the chances you have of winning the round. So now that you have a good grasp of positioning, let's move into the final aspect of game sense that I'm going over in this video, and that is team callouts. Team comps are crucial to raking up because they create consistency. Every game you have four random monkeys, and the only way to have consistency with these teammates is through proper communications. The reason this is part of game sense is because team comms is actually the verbal form of game sense. You essentially take strategies from your mind and realize them into the actual game. When it comes to callouts, there are three main ideas you want to communicate. Your team's strategies, information about the enemy, and positive reinforcements to boost the team's morale. Let's start with the first and most important thing to communicate, which is your strategy. What are you going to be doing this round? I see this way too many times in lower ranks where no one comes anything and then everyone just mindlessly follows each other into the bomb site where they all just get destroyed. Some people overthink it, but it doesn't actually have to be super complicated. Just something that gets the idea across. It could be something as simple as, let's quietly walk up A site and then Reyna, can you flash us out? The reason this is so important is because not only does it increase the chances of you winning the round, but it also lets you know what strategies work and which don't. What are you the second most important idea to call out, which should already be obvious, is information about the enemy. Typically, the enemy location and how much damage you did. The best way to do this is to say their agent's name, their location, and the damage dealt. Reyna showers lit 50, or Ray's U-Haul hit 100. Other useful comms include what ultimates the enemy team has, if they have enough credits to buy an op, and if they have a tendency to play in certain positions. Because if you notice that they do, call it out. Chamber always peaks with op from cat, for example, gets your team actively thinking and helps you counter the enemy team. The important thing to remember is that no matter how obvious the information is, your team can't read your mind. Assume they don't know anything, so don't get lazy and communicate everything that could possibly be important. Short, 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 short. The third and probably last thing you should communicate to your team is positivity. In order to have more consistent teammates, you need to be the one that boosts your team's morale. It's important to compliment your teammates when they're playing well, but it's even more important to encourage them when they're performing poorly. Okay. Uh, that's fine, that's fine. You will get into games where your team is losing and everyone is silent. In these situations, it's crucial that you bring your team's morale up by saying things like, we are better than these guys, we just need to focus up and play it smart. If a teammate is underperforming, you could say, you got this, I believe in you. They already feel like crap, so by lifting the mood, they will feel better and make them more likely to communicate and play better. Although game sense seems like a very general concept, the most important thing you should focus on is improving your decision making, your positioning, and team callouts, and I promise, you will start seeing crazy improvements in your consistency and win rate. The last aspect of ranking up and the one holding most people back is mentality. Mentality is actually one of the most important concepts that's rarely talked about in detail. People often think that mentality is just being a positive team player, but that's honestly less than 5% of it. That said, here are the five core mentality tips you have to wrap your head around to reach immortal. Number one, drop your ego. The number one reason you aren't improving is because you think you're already better than most of the people in your rank. In truth, 
thinking that you're the best player in silver isn't going to get you anywhere. As hard as it is to accept, the reason you are heart stuck is because of you, not your teammates. Don't fall into the mental trap of thinking you're too good just because you match MVP. At the same time, don't beat yourself up when you bottom frag. All sorts of games will happen, but it's your focus on improvement that matters. So if you actually want to improve, the first thing you need to do is drop your ego. This brings me to the second principle, which is to focus on long-term improvement. Once you're out of the I'm the best player in silver cycle, you will actually create room to grow. This is where you want to think long-term and view all of your games as an opportunity to learn. Instead of focusing strictly on winning, focus on improving. With this play to improve mindset, you actually gain more if you lose but learn a lot than if you win but don't learn anything at all. Think what you could have done better after each round and every game. Focus on playing actively instead of going on autopilot. Actively think about why you died and how your team could have played differently rather than mindlessly playing to win. On a topic of playing to win, this actually brings me to the third rule, which is that you should view every single game as winnable. This one is pretty self-explanatory, but basically you should have it engraved in your mind that every single game is winnable no matter what. If the score is 7 to 12 or 2 to 12, or even if you have terrible teammates who are toxic, you must try your best to win the game. When you give up or try to FF, not only are you basically guaranteeing yourself a loss, but you're also giving up any chances of getting better. So unless you hate winning or getting better, then I would still strongly encourage you to not throw the towel even if your team is playing terribly. Encourage them, mute them if you have to, but you should always look at every single game as winnable, no matter the odds. The fourth idea which I have touched on in my previous rank up guides is the concept of less games, more wins. Most people think that the fastest way to rank up is to play as many games as possible, but this is the completely wrong approach. The important depiction is that it's not the number of games you play, but the number of games you win. If you play 2-3 to three games and win all of them, it is way better than playing 10 matches a day where you lose most of them. Don't play comps just to play. Play only when you feel like you're going to win. I repeat, play only when you feel like you're going to win. And when you do, play those 2-3 to three games with full attention and motivation. Hit those taps and get that RR. Once you win a few games, it's okay to stop. In the act I ranked up from Silver to Immortal, I played a maximum of 3-4 to four games a day. You'll notice that it's actually pretty easy to rank up once you stop spamming matches and instead focus on having a few quality games where you're fully engaged. The last point I want to leave you guys off on is that sometimes it's honestly time for a break. The fastest way to throw all of your progress is to keep queuing when you're tilted or on a losing streak. Sometimes the best way to reset your mentality and motivation is to get off the game and do something else. It's always a good idea to reset and go outside or talk with your friends. Remember that Valorant is just a game and you need to touch grass every once in a while. And that about wraps it up. In this video, we've talked about the fundamental principle of ranking up, why some players can rank up so quickly, and how you yourself can quickly improve your mechanics, your game sense, and mentality to achieve similar results. I would highly recommend re-watching this video or taking notes because if you strictly follow everything laid out in this video, you'll have a very good shot at reaching Immortal. If you learned anything and would like to see more videos similar to this one, consider subscribing. Love you all. Peace.